What's going on everyone? Welcome back to a new YouTube video. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. If you guys are new around here, my name is Samuel Elkins. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based here in Los Angeles, California. But the real reason you guys are all here obviously is because I'm going to be showing you how I edit my photography. And this is probably the most highly requested video that I've ever gotten. I kind of waited until I've developed a style that I really feel like is teachable, if that makes sense. You know, it's not just I import the photos, I slap a one-click edit on it and I call it a day. You know, I really feel like now I I'm trying to work through each individual image and show you guys the look that I'm trying to get over a cohesive you know, set of images to tell a story. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be walking you guys through one of my favorite shoots I did last year. But this video is actually part of a bigger editing lesson that I have actually developed over the last couple months. And what this lesson actually entails is an entire breakdown of how I edit my photography. We're going to be working all the way through Lightroom, exporting, culling settings as well. We're also going to be breaking down two entire shoot catalogs. One of them is going to be a commercial shoot that I did last year, as well as an entire lifestyle shoot. Showing you guys how I edit, I pick selects, and then also how I find a cohesive look throughout an entire selection of images, which I think is extremely hard to do. And I don't really feel like up until this point, I had been able to you know, actually teach that, but I do feel like now I have the knowledge and the capabilities to teach you guys what I know, you know, and how I go about editing my photography. I think to me, editing is such a cornerstone of my work and a lot of other photographers as well. If you guys are interested, definitely check out the link down in the description uh, for more information. It's going to be $50 for the next week only. And it's many, many hours of interactive editing content. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. There's actually going to be a giveaway at the end of this video as well. So if you guys stick around, you have the chance to win one of five editing courses that I'm going to be giving away. As well as over the next couple weeks, I'm going to be doing much more editing focused videos to obviously promote this lesson as well as just share with you guys some of the knowledge that I've accumulated over the last eight years. So without any further ado, I know you guys are actually here to learn from me. So definitely go check out the editing lesson that is linked down below and let's hop right into the video and show you guys how to edit. So first things first, you're going to want to import and cull your photos. I'm going to bring my raw files into Photo Mechanic here and that is my program of choice. You can use Lightroom, you can use Adobe Bridge, whatever you'd like. Photo Mechanic for me works the best and it's, I've found the best way to get consistent culling. Essentially what I mean by culling here is I'm bringing a very large amount of raw files that I might've shot for any specific shoot and I'm kind of condensing that into a smaller section of raw files that I know I want to edit. This helps a lot when I'm going to be importing photos into Lightroom. I don't necessarily like to cull within Lightroom. I know a lot of people do, but for me, I find it a lot easier to cull with Photo Mechanic and then bring these images into Lightroom once I've completed the culling process. I think this just makes things a lot more simplified and easy and I can just see very clearly which images I enjoy and just import those. Essentially, my philosophy though as I'm culling is if I like a photo even just a little bit, even the thought of editing it, I'm going to include it in the mix. And if I clearly don't like the image and it's out of focus or the composition isn't what I enjoy, then I'm going to obviously not include that in the batch that I'm going to import into Lightroom. So we're gonna go through some raw files that I shot here really quickly, and we're going to speed this process up for the sake of this video. So what I'm looking for here as I'm culling is a multitude of different things, including lighting, composition, and I'm kind of envisioning what the final edit might look like, which honestly isn't too far off from the way that I shot these images. I shot these on the Canon EOS R with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And all I'm doing here is just simply tagging the photos that I like and bringing those into Lightroom once I'm done. All right, so we've now made it over into Lightroom and I'm going to edit my five favorite images from this shoot. This was a shoot we did a while back. I actually made a video about it. One of my favorite photo shoots I've done in a while is with my friend Jacob. We actually got to fly in a Cessna plane with him all the way through Southern California. It was super fun. We shot at a couple different airports in Santa Monica. It was just really pretty. The colors are amazing and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys kind of how I would go about working on these images. So first things first, I just want to show you guys what we're working with here. So we have a multitude of different portraits, 
for the most part. And they're all kind of either in direct light or side light scenarios. But for the most part, you have some really nice kind of direct sunlight on his face. And this is gonna be good because I can show you guys kind of how to work the skin tones to your liking. So first things first, I'll start with the tone curve here. Normally I like to bring down the tonality and the highlights. I really like soft pastel highlights. I think it just looks really nice. And it's really easy to see the similarities over a multitude of different images. Right off the bat though, I do want to enable the profile corrections. I don't love when lenses vignette and Canon lenses tend to vignette quite a bit. So I wanna fix that just right off the bat. And if I need to, I can fix that distortion later. We did shoot through a window here. So that's important to note for later if we need to fix that. But again, I'm gonna bring these highlights almost all the way down. I just wanna kind of mess around and see how that affects the skin tones. And what I'm gonna to do to add some more contrast back to the image is bring up the lights here. And I think that is really going to help. So what I'm going to do as well is bring up the lights here and that's going to add some contrast back into the image. Bring down the exposure just so I can kind of mess around. And you guys will notice a common theme throughout all of the raw files that I've shot is I try to get as much right in camera as possible so I don't really have to mess around too much in Lightroom. I don't wanna look at Lightroom as a way of saving my images. I want to look at Lightroom or other editing programs as a way to emphasize a great image that was already taken in camera. And I would encourage you guys to do the same. I think it really helps to have all of your camera settings dialed in, everything from white balance to making sure that your composition looks good and everything else in between. It's really going to allow you to have better raw files to work with day in and day out versus trying to make a crappy raw file come back from the dead and look amazing because it's not going to. So. I think this is something that I always try to do is just have really nice raw files to work with. And then from here, once I start adjusting the tonality and the tone curve, I really like to just kind of go in here and mess around and see what looks the best. A lot of this is just kind of fine tuning to your liking. Um, I don't want too much contrast. I do like kind of like low contrast in a lot of my images. As you can see, bringing down the highlights here really affects the skin tones. You don't want to go all the way because it kind of reveals blemishes or you know if it feels hot outside at all it's going to show sweat um so you know kind of like a happy medium in there where it's you know it's it's dark enough that you can see the skin tones but at the same time it's not overdone you know and i think that's something you'll realize throughout all this editing process for me is i like to keep things really simple and keeping things simple a lot of the time it seems like it's not enough but then once you have a collection of images that look really nice and clean it's going to allow for you know a really nice cohesive look throughout so moving on here, I like to adjust my shadows as well. Obviously like these are kind of the more fine tuning options, but I do like to kind of mess around and just see what's gonna look the best. A lot of this has to do with just the level of contrast that you want in your image. That's what this you know tonality section is for, to show the difference between your blacks and your whites. As you can see, we have a decently high contrast image, but that's going to happen because we have a lot of light on the subject's face. That's totally fine. I really actually love how this is coming along. I'm going to adjust those highlights even a little bit more. You see what it does over here as I'm adjusting these highlights. Don't even necessarily look at the skin tones as much as in the background. I really love that pastel look. I think it looks really nice. And I do think that this look is very timeless. It's not going to fade away in several years. You know, this is a look that I can stick to for quite a while. And I really think that it's a look that just works on, on most images. Um, now we're gonna go into HSL here. And I don't typically adjust HSL too much unless there's a color that's really standing out to me that I really feel like I need to adjust. Again, I really love to get as much right in camera as possible and keep my editing process as simple as possible. As you can see, again, here's the difference between the raw file that we started with and our edited one so far. Not a huge difference, but the subtle editing is really what's going to help your image come to life. But again, it starts with a great raw file. So we're gonna go in here. I do wanna bring down the luminance, which I guess is another word for brightness on his jacket, but you have to watch because that's going to adjust the skin tones as well. You have to be careful, but you can use this color picker tool right here and it's going to, you know, figure out what colors you're trying to adjust and it will help you adjust those accordingly. I just want to bring down, I just wanted to bring down the darkness in the jacket just a little bit. So up in the top right here, we have a little bit of blue coming into the frame. This is most likely because we shot through a window. Something simple that we can do to negate that obviously is to bring down the saturation in the blue. And now that's just kind of, gray i think it looks better than the blue did um, as you can see in the before and after here those blues are now gone um, and i really love how this is coming along i want to adjust and bring this to a, i think this would look really nice with a four by five crop he doesn't necessarily need to be right in the center of the frame i'm going to kind of put um, the back third of his head on the right third of the frame 
Just because I love this negative space over here, I think it, you know, is very atmospheric, very cinematic, for lack of a better word. And 4x5 just kind of always looks nice. I use 4x5 a lot in all my images, especially on my website. Um, this image is coming along. I really like how everything is looking. We're going to bring down these highlights just a little bit more. Nothing too crazy though. And again, I don't like adding too much contrast, so I tend to lean on this contrast tool quite a bit. In terms of white balance, I think the white balance looks really nice. In this image, it's nice and warm, but not too warm. And again, that's kind of what we're going for here. Um, let's also bring the hue in here. We're going to adjust the oranges just a little bit. Make them just a little bit more yellow. Ever so slightly. A lot of this is just fine tuning. Especially with HSL, you kind of have to just see what looks the best. Lucky for us, there's not crazy colors that stand out in this entire set, so it's really nice and easy to work with. Split toning is something that I would normally do if there's more sky. Um, there's not a lot of highlights that I want to make a certain color in this image, I think, especially because a lot of the highlights are skin tones. You want to keep those as natural as possible, so I'm not going to be adjusting uh, the split toning at all. Um, we're going to be going down here. Adding, I don't necessarily think we need 40 sharpening. I usually do between 25 and 30. I think that's more than enough. Again, we have the lens corrections all dialed in here. This looks great. Don't need to transform an image at all. I don't really usually add a lot of grain, especially if I'm going for a cleaner look. This looks pretty nice. So then just some final adjustments on the tone curve here. We're gonna bring up just the lights right here. As you can see, you can drag it down. It's going to adjust different parts of the image. We want to almost be in that highlight range, but we still want to adjust the lighter parts. Make those just a little bit brighter. Right about there, looks good. So, as you can see, we got a before and after here. This looks great. I'm pretty happy with it. I think the skin tones look really nice. As you can see, we kind of recovered a lot of those highlights in the skin tones. It looks really nice and clean. And this is an image that I'm very proud of. This is an image I'd put on my website. Uh, obviously, we'd go into Photoshop and just clean up a few things, but for the sake of this video, we're just showing you how to color. So let's move on to the next one. So moving on here, we have another image that is shot through a window. We can try and copy the edits that we just did to this image. However, I don't really think it's going to look very good. Actually, not bad. Um, it's just different because you have different highlights here and it's rolling off versus, you know, very direct light in this last image. So I'd rather just honestly edit this image from scratch. It's just gonna be a lot easier. So first things first, let's bring down these highlights. We wanna be able to see through the window as best as possible. Again, I like to start with the major adjustments on the tone curve here, adding some contrast back. Especially when we're shooting through a window, you usually have to add a lot of contrast back into the image. That's totally fine. Um, we're going to bring down those darks a little bit. I just wanna be able to see our subject through the window. Shadows as well. And then let's go in here and I don't love how the darks are looking. So let's kind of mess around with that a little bit. I want to make them just a little bit more even without like blowing them out of proportion. This looks pretty nice. I think the lights are a little bit too much. Yeah, there we go. It looks better. And as you can see, I like to start with just like a super simple base. We didn't really do much, but we definitely clean the image up in terms of tonality. Like, Everything is much more even and ready to be edited properly. So let's head in and adjust these highlights again. As you can see, it does a lot to the image. We don't want to like blow these highlights out, but I do like to definitely give them much more of a pastel look, especially to the brighter parts of the image. I think it just looks really nice. Complements colors very well. Um, we're going to bring these shadows down again. I want to adjust the crop on this as well. I don't love the crop. Four by five probably looks the best. We don't want to crop out his hand. I think this probably would look the best. Yeah, this looks nice. So again, we're just going to start with some fine tweaking here. We've got the Adobe Color Camera Profile going on here, which comes standard with Adobe. Um, and I'm going to pick a target white for this white balance. It seems a little bit too cool for me, especially with the overall feeling of this, of this photo set. I think I wanted a bit more of a warm white balance to it. So what that eyedropper tool does is it allows you to pick a target neutral which is like the whitest white in your image and it is going actually for like a cooler white balance i don't love that i wanted it to be a little bit warmer it was really warm that day and i'm trying to kind of bring out the warm tones in each of these images 
So I'm just adjusting it ever so slightly, bringing down the exposure here. I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast. I do like how that looks. Adding contrast and bumping the exposure usually just adds a little bit of pop to the image, but not too much. You know, we all these are very subtle, slight adjustments. And then let's work in here with like kind of the mid-tones. So as you can see, if I drag it up this way, it adds a lot of contrast and it really just overdoes, overdoes it a lot. So we're gonna go down even a little bit farther here and just add a little bit of oomph back into those mid-tones. See how that looks. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's our before and after. Let's do a quick skin tones check just to make sure everything looks pretty good. It does look a little bit green, so we're gonna go into the tint here and switch it a little bit more towards the magenta side, just ever so slightly. Tint is very fragile in when you're editing, so you don't want to overdo it. But if you look at the highlights, that's usually the easiest way to tell how the tint is. It's usually either too green or too magenta, and that's really simple to fix. You literally can just adjust this ever so slightly, and it's going to give you the correct tint to your image. So this is looking pretty nice. I don't love how his hand is like really overexposed. So what we can do is bring that down and then just bump the shadows. But then again. It might look a little too like HDR because we already have the highlights all the way down. So what we can do to negate that is just bring the contrast actually back down. And this is looking much nicer than before. As you can see, we kind of cleared up that reflection a little bit so you can really see through the, the window really nicely. And this is sometimes really hard to do. It really depends on how you shoot it. Um, sometimes it's it's impossible to even know in the moment whether it's going to look nice once you edit it. But luckily, these both of these images, when we shot through the window, these both look super nice. Um, and as you can see, the edits are pretty consistent throughout. I would say this one's a little bit more contrasty just because we have that direct light going on. So that's totally fine. But I think it does look really nice when they're paired together. So let's move on to the third image here. Again, we're going to crop this. I think this one will probably look better with a center composition. We're gonna four by five crop it again. Not perfectly centered, but more centered than it was. Yeah, this looks nice, because you have his arm right here. It's almost like a leading line. You have the leading lines right here, bringing you right to the subject's face. It looks really nice. Here we have a lot of pretty harsh light to work with in the face, which should look pretty nice, but the first things first is we're going to need to start with our base. So again, I don't really want to use the previous edits that I just used because they were for edits with a window, so much more contrast. This is going to be a lot less contrast because there's already a lot in the raw file based on how we shot it. So keep that in your mind as you're editing. But again, we're gonna bring these highlights down, I'm going to adjust the lights. I like more of a pastel look for this. So that's what happens when you bring the brighter parts of the image down, the highlights and the lights. It's going to make things a lot more even. You know, you got like the blue sky and the tonality, like even in his skin tones, they look very similar now versus when we started uh, much brighter. It's very subtle, I know, but with a lot of subtle adjustments, the more that you make to the image, it's really just going to make it stand out. We're gonna also adjust the darks here. I wanna add a little bit of contrast back in here. Not too much though. I bring up that exposure. We're going to also adjust the lens corrections here just to bring out the, the corners here and make sure they're not vignetting too much. Now, I remember this being a lot warmer than it was, than it, than it looks like in this image. So what we're gonna do here is make the image a bit warmer down those highlights. I want the viewer to feel like they can feel the sun on the subject's face because it was a really bright day. It was really beautiful, really breezy out. And I want to convey that in my image. So we're bringing the exposure up here. Not too much. I want it like slightly overexposed on his skin just because that's usually a look that I like to go for, but not too much, you know? And you guys are probably looking at this and like, wow, he's doing such simple edits. How is this looking so good? Again, I'm going to stress this throughout. The importance of a great raw file to work with is just as important as your editing knowledge and your editing skill set. And you can do a lot more with a great raw file, so keep that in mind. With this, also, we're going to bring down the luminance on the oranges, which obviously, one way or the other, could look pretty awful. So you gotta be really careful with this. But just ever so slightly, I want, again, the oranges on his skin to just be a tiny bit darker so you can actually really see the skin tones and they're very pleasing to the eye. And we're also going to adjust the saturation on his jacket. Again though, the problem with this is it's going to actually adjust the skin tones on his face. So what we can do here is just a super simple brush 
on his jacket. And as you can see, we can, you know, remove some as well. We don't want it on the dark parts, just like kind of the highlights of his jacket. Nothing too crazy. And it doesn't need to be perfect because this is going to be like a super subtle adjustment. If it was a crazy adjustment, we would need it to be pretty perfect. But you know, for the most part, as long as it covers most of his jacket, it should look pretty nice. So we're actually not making it brighter. We're going to adjust the saturation. That looks pretty nice. Bring these highlights down. Again, you see what I did there is just a super simple look to make the image much more pastel. This looks great. Now, again, we can adjust the split tone here on the highlights, but not too much because we don't want it to be overblown. I probably am gonna go for much more of like an orange highlight look here, but really, really subtle. Like we're gonna be doing like the difference between like five and 25 is crazy, but we just wanna go really simple with it. And as you can see, this is looking beautiful and really very simple adjustments. I wanted to make that sky and his skin tones feel one and the same in terms of the tonality and the highlights and the lights. I wanted to make it feel, you know, just really even, but I wanted to add color, but in a way that makes sense, you know? And for me, this is what I, I'm always kind of going for, especially with portraits that have a lot of really bright light in the skin tones. The way that you can fix this if it feels too bright is you can bring down the tonality in these lighter parts of your image and it's most likely gonna make it a lot more even, especially if you have a lot of sky to work with like we do here. And this is looking pretty nice. Actually, the one thing that I'm going to be doing to kind of finish this image off is to add some saturation back in. And not a lot, again, very, very subtle, but I do want these colors to pop. I don't want it to be too desaturated that it doesn't look real, but this looks great. All right, so moving on now to our final two images. The nice thing is, is we can copy the edit that we just did to our other image and paste it most likely to these next few images. Because the lighting is so similar, it should look pretty nice. So all we do is just Command C, Command V, pretty simple. And yeah, looks amazing. As I suspected, when you are copying and pasting edits to other images, it's important to note that you're probably gonna have to make adjustments because no two images are the same. For this image, I actually wanna add a little bit of grain. I think it'll just kind of tie the image together. I want you to be able to see some grain in the sky. I love how this image is framed, but I think we can do a better job with the composition. Let's try four by five again. As you guys can see, I enjoy four by five quite a bit. I think I want Jacob to be like on the, yeah, it looks nice. Cause I love the Cessna logo right there. I think that probably looks the best. I love, the cool shadows right here, halfway through his jacket. I remember when I was shooting this, I, I knew that this would edit very well in Lightroom because we have a nice distribution of dynamic range in the image. Highlights, shadows look great. One thing I'm also probably gonna do here as well is add a little bit of highlight tonality back, just cause I wanna be able to see those big bright blue skies and it's really kind of affecting his skin tones as well, which is totally fine. It actually looks really nice. We don't want him to be too pastel, like right around there probably looks pretty nice. So moving on to our fifth and final image here. Again, we can copy the edit from this image because this is a more of a tweaked version of this. It's nice because you can just kind of continue to do this throughout your Lightroom catalog. In the lesson, I will go much more in depth about this if you guys are interested in exploring the options of different looks and styles for different kinds of shoots and catalogs. Definitely check that out. But we're going to continue and edit the final image here. We're gonna paste our edit. This looks great. Um, one thing that I noticed right off the bat that was a little too warm. And I think because this was closer to sunset, so you want you know the skin tones to look normal. Uh, we're gonna bring the grain down. I only wanted it for the last image. I don't really want it for this. Bring the exposure down just a little bit. And then we're gonna crop this as well. I don't want that shadow on the far right. And it looks like we're gonna need to do four by five. This looks great because we have his shoulder kind of on the right third right there. It looks so nice. And we're going to also adjust the lines in this. Looks great. And then finally, I want to add just a little bit more contrast back into this image. See how that looks. Quick before and after. That looks great. Okay, so is there anything else that we want to do to this? Honestly, this looks pretty nice. It's a little too saturated maybe, again, because it was closer to sunset, so we'll just bring that down just a little bit. But now, as you guys can see, if we go over to our library module, 
So as you guys can see, we're flipping through these photos right here. And you know, the first two we shot through a window, so much more contrast, but I still think it looks really nice. You have to be kind of weary of the highlights and the contrast and the differences between the shadows because you have another layer of glass that you're shooting through. But I think those turned out really nice. And then we went for much more of a pastel look with these three images as well. I think they all tie together really nicely and that's kind of the goal with this. If you guys are interested in seeing my longer process of editing an entire commercial shoot as well as editing an entire lifestyle shoot, definitely check out the link down in the description for my editing course. As I said, there's gonna to be tons and tons of information packed into that thing. And it's gonna be $50 for the next week only. So if you guys wanna snag that pre-order price for the next week, it's only gonna be $50, which is kind of a steal just to learn all the editing secrets that I have. And just to explain to you guys how to edit your photos properly and not over edit them, which I think a lot of people do nowadays and it's really easy to do. So I'm happy to share my knowledge with you guys. But as promised, I'm going to be giving away five of these editing lessons. So if you guys wanna comment down below what you struggle with the most with editing, I will be picking five of you guys over the next week. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to just leave your Instagram down in the description. Follow me over on Instagram as well as follow me on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel and we will see you guys in the next week or so with another editing video. Take care.